Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, we have just uh, introduced some theoretical foundation under the theory of probabilities, which is actually based on uh, the set theory and the measure theory. Um, we have introduced the concept of a, a sample space with elementary um, events. Each of them uh, is assigned certain measure. In some simple case, all the elementary events are equally probable, so all of them have the same measure, and the sum of all the elementary events, sum of the measures, um, is equal to 1, basically. That's how the probability started. So the total probability is always 1, the probability of something happening. All right, so um, I would like to, um, um, to deal with certain operations um, on events in the same way as we had certain operations in the set theory, like union, intersection. Um, so, this is a continuation of uh, theory of probability um, chapter of this course of advanced mathematics, which is uh, presented on unisor.com. Um, it's, a, it's a free course for, for everybody. It's kind of advanced. Um, and. Uh, the purpose of this course is to basically not as much um, to give certain skills or certain number of facts, etc. The purpose of this course is to develop the creativity and analytical thinking in students. And that's why I'm paying a lot of attention to certain um, theories which are significantly deeper than is customary to study at school and also extremely important um, is uh, problem solving and uh, I have a lot of lectures dedicated to problem solving so anyway so let's get into this particular lecture it's um, I call it event arithmetics so I'm going to operate with events as with sets and subsets in the theory of sets in the set, of set theory um, and the question is how the probability measure is um, uh, dependent on what kind of operations we are performing with events. So I will start with an example um, which will be kind of a basis for this lecture. I will use it for all the different um, uh, operations which I'm doing with um, events. And uh, the, this example is a very simple one. Consider we are rolling two dice, and one of them have one of them has this type of outcomes. On another, we have the same outcomes. And on crossing of these columns and um, and rows, I will put the result. What actually happens? All right. So, first, uh, I would like to um, introduce the concept of a sample space. What, what is a sample space? Well, sample space is obviously all the different combinations of the first and the second uh, dice. Now, we have six for one and six for another, and we can have, obviously, for each of these, we can have each of those. So we have 36 different combinations. Now, um, let's assume that the experiment is ideal and all of these combinations have exactly the same probability. Now, since there are 36 of them, each one, each elementary event, which means that the first, um, die, the first die shows, let's say, 2 and the second shows 5, so, or any other combination, each one of these combinations uh, has the probability of 136. Now, the first thing which we were talking about when introducing the theory of probabilities was the concept of event, which consists of certain elementary events. So, let's say I'm interested in event um, that the sum of two dice is equal to, let's say, five. Now, this is an event. 
Now, how is it represented in the language of uh, elementary events? Well, obviously the sum can be equal to 5 if the first um, uh, the first die shows 1 and the second 4, right? So this is an elementary event which we are interested in, right? Also, 2 and 3 would show exactly the same sum of 5. 3 and 2 also. And 4 and 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Four different elementary events. 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, and 4, 1. All of them result in the sum of 2 equal to 5. None other, by the way. So the probability is obviously sum of these probabilities because they are completely uh, exclusive from each other. If one uh, shows 3 and another is 2, it's completely unrelated to one shows 4 and, and another 1, for instance. It's two completely unrelated elementary events. Each of them has a probability of 136. So four of them have the probability 436, which is 1 ninth. So that's the probability of this event. All right? OK, now that's one event. Now, I was talking about this lecture is dedicated to different operations on events. So we need another event. Well, let's just consider another event. Another event is when the sum is equal to 8. Okay, let's think about what is the probability of this. Well, the probability of this is equal to, if I have a sum of 8, then the first one can be 2 and the second one should be 6, or 3 and 5, or 4 and 4, or 5 and 3, or 6 and 2, and none others. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have 5, 36. Now, and that's my first operation. Now, what kind of operations, by the way, we can introduce into the theory of probabilities? Well, considering that the theory of probabilities uh, 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 um, deals with uh, events and elementary events, it's exactly the same as in the, in the set theory, right? So we have operations of union, intersection, uh, negation maybe. Um, so I'm going to expand these um, set theory operations into the theory of probabilities. So in our case, my first example is operation OR, or union. So if this is if this is event X, let's say, and this is event Y, what is X OR Y? OR X union Y. What is this event? Well, obviously, this event is that the sum of two dice is equal to 5 or 8. Right? That's what OR actually means. So, all these elementary events which constituted my first event, when sum is equal to 5, which is this one, uh, 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, and 4, 1. All of these four elements um, satisfy this particular event because the sum is equal to 5 or 8. Now, in these cases, it's, it's 5. In these cases, it's 8. So these elements also um, correspond to the event x or y. So what's the probability of this event x or y? Well, it's all these plus all these should be summarized together. So it's four of these and five of these, so it's nine. So the probability of x union y is equal to 936, or one-fourth. Now, what's important here, that I just added these and these. When can I do it? 
Obviously, I can do it only in case these two subsets, these two events, have nothing in common. They are mutually exclusive, so to speak. There are no elementary events which belong here and there. If I have one event consi consisting of certain number of elementary events, and another consisting of other, completely other elementary events, then I can say that I can add them to get the OR condition, to get the union of two events. If there is something in common, I cannot do it so simply. I will address it a little bit later in the lecture. But meanwhile, we have just learned that if my two events are mutually exclusive, then, and that's very interesting, I can just summarize it. It's the probability of x, now it's 1 ninth or 4 uh, 36 plus 5 36, it's exactly 9 36 plus p of y. So, what's the final formula which we have arrived with? This one. The probability of or or union of two mutually exclusive events is equal to sum of their probabilities. That's very important. Now, it, it, it means that the measure, the probability measure, is um, basically an additive function and you can really just have a very simple formula, uh, but only in case you have a mutually exclusive uh, events. Now, let me just uh, bring the parallel to uh, something like area in, in, in geometry. If you have one particular figure and it has certain area and, it, and you have another um, uh, figure, it also has a certain area, then union of these, which means everything here and there together, also has cert it, it's certain area, right? And the, and the area of this figure, combined figure, is equal to sum of these areas because the area behaves, exact, behaves exactly like the probability. The abstract concept in mathematics is the concept of measure. This is the measure. Area is a measure. Same thing as length, same thing as weight. Now, in case of measure of these two figures, this one and this one, you see there is a common part. And we cannot say that the um, measure or the area of the combined figure is equal to sum of these two separately because there is a common place, common, common, uh, common piece. But if there is none, if events are mutually exclusive, then the addition actually works fine. The measure of their um, union is equal to uh, sum of their measures. Now, to indicate that events are mutually exclusive, we sometimes use slightly different notation instead of union sign we'll just use the plus now what this plus means it's not addition because these are events we can't really add events it means actually uh, two things. Number one, that X and Y are mutually exclusive, and number two, we are combining them using the logical operation of OR, or a set theory uh, operations of union, which is basically the same thing. So, this mutually exclusive um, events can be combined together using the OR operation, and since the formula looks, you know, very simple in this case, it's more for aesthetics um, uh, than for anything else. But in this case, plus means actually we are ordering, we are unionizing two events which are mutually exclusive. That's what's very important. And then this nice formula actually takes place. If they are not mutually exclusive, there is a slightly more complicated formula which I will address a little later. All right, so let me wipe out this. So we have come up with this addition theorem. Okay, so union of mutually exclusive events is basically like addition. Now let's talk about intersection and its connection to multiplication operation. All right. 
All right, let's consider two events now. Okay, these are our old events, and we will consider new events. Events number one, whatever the first die shows is uh, greater or equal to five. Now, what's the probability of this event? Let's just think about it. If I'm completely disregarding what's, what's the second die show, uh, shows, and, and I'm talking only about the first, it means that whatever the second uh, die show still is good enough as long as the first one is greater than or equal to 5. So the first one should be greater or equal to 5, which means it should be um, here and here. No, that's the second one, sorry. First one is this one. So the first one is 5 or 6. This and this. Now, the second one, I don't really care, which means all these guys also are part of my event. So, 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, etc., etc. All of them are good enough for this because the first one is 5, which is greater or equal to 5, as well as 6, 1, 6, 2, etc., up to 6, 6. Now, the probability is 6 and 6, it's 12, so we have 12, 36. Now, the probability of the second event, now, my second event is that the die number 2 shows less than or equal to 4. So it's 4 and less than 4. Let's think about it. So 4 and 3 and 2 and 1, they're all good enough. So this is good, this is good, this is good, and this is good. So it doesn't matter what shows the first one, as long as the second not greater than 4. Notice that we have certain number of elementary events common for both. So these are elementary events which are this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 24, 36, which is 2 thirds. And these guys, these elementary events, belong to this event. Now, now I'm talking about their interception. In, in, interception. Now, intersection are events which belong to both, which is this, 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 and this. One, two, three, four, eight. So, if I'm talking about intersection between, okay, this is X and this is Y. X and Y. Or X intersection Y. It's only these, which is 8, 36, right? Or uh, two nines, right? And notice a very important thing. If I will multiply this by this, one third by two third, I will get two nines, exactly this one. So it looks like for this particular case, I have that the probability of intersection equals to the product of liability uh, of uh, probabilities, not liabilities. Um, it's a very in interesting uh, observation, and it's not a coincidence in this particular case. Let me just um, explain under what conditions this actually is happening. Uh, consider this is your total sample space. Points inside of this square, these are these points, okay? 
Now, certain number of events is x and x and certain number of events is uh, uh, is y. So we have two events x and y. The x uh, constitutes from certain number of elementary events and y has inside certain number of elementary events. And there is something in intersection, some, some common elements among them, right? Now, let me just um, say the following. Now, what is the probability of x? Well, it's basically uh, the part of the entire sample space occupied by elementary events which belong to x, right? So, if we don't know anything about uh, what's happening, we can say that, statistically speaking, if we will conduct m a million uh, experiments, then a certain number of experiments would constitute our um, event X, and the ratio of uh, X happening versus the uh, total number of experiments would be close to the probability of x, right? Same thing with y. But what if I will tell you the following? You know what, guys? Event y, I know definitely, is happening. In this case, under this condition, what would be the probability of x? Well, you think about it this way. You know that, the prob th that event y is is happening. It means that the probability uh, measure is distributed not among all the different uh, elementary events inside the entire sample space, but only within the boundaries of event Y. So we know for sure that one of these is definitely happening, which means that the probability measure should not be one, like in this case, 136 but only one divided by the number of elementary events within the boundaries of y. Now, if I want to know what's the probability of x under this condition, I should probably have a ratio of elementary events which are here in the common part relative to this uh, number of elementary events inside the y, right? So, let me just put some numbers in it. Let's consider that the probability of x is number of elementary events inside the x, which is lowercase x, divided by total number of events in an entire space, in an entire sample space. Now, probability of event y means lowercase y divided by n. This is number of elementary events here instead of y. Now, what I'm saying is that considering the number of elementary events in their intersection is z, which means the probability is z over n, what I'm saying is that the conditional probability of event x under condition, notice this vertical line, under condition that event y is happening, is basically only these common parts, which is z, should be divided by number of elementary events inside the y. That would be a reasonable definition of conditional probability, right? We will um, um, uh, talk about conditional probability uh, in another set of lectures. This is just a, a very brief look into it. But now, look at it this way. You can represent it as um, uh, z divided by n over y divided by n, which is a probability of intersection divided by probability of y, right? So, what do we have now? Now we have a very important uh, consideration to make. 
let me just introduce a new concept independence events are independent from each other well from the common standpoint let me just uh, uh, address it this way if you think that event X is completely independent of event Y it means that no matter whether Y is or is not happening conditional probability of X should be the same so conditional probability of X if Y happens should be equal to unconditional probability of X if we don't really know whether Y happens or not happens so if my conditional probability equals to unconditional probability then I can call events independent and it's kind of a reasonable definition which again we will address in some other lecture more precisely but in this case what it means is look at this p of x is equal to this so for independent events x and y I can definitely say that P of X times P of Y equals P of X intersection Y, right? I just multiply this times this should be equal to this. And this looks like our uh, multiplication theorem. Now, you remember if this is the union and events are mutually exclusive, then this is the plus. Now, if it's intersection and events are independent of each other then this is an operation of multiplication and that's why sometimes again we can use this notation just multiplication sign it means events are independent of each other and we can use this theorem so the probability of end between two events or intersection between two events in case they are independent of each other is equal to the product of the uh, uh, of probabilities so we have a couple of theorems here one was this and another is this one let me write it down this way again this is not a product in as much as this is not an addition this is operation of union or uh, operation or between mutually exclusive events and then we can have this formula okay not this formula obviously but this formula and in case of independent events we have the multiplication theorem and this is not a product this is basically a um, intersection of independent events now the last thing which I wanted to address um, in, the, in this lecture is basically maybe uh, I'll use the same picture and it's related to union of non mutually exclusive events so not like this this is a simple formula which works only for mutually exclusive events now what if events are not mutually exclusive like in this particular case we have something in common well here is very easy thing to do if I will have union Y in this case now let's think about what happens if I do this well I'm counting all these elementary events and all these elementary events what's important is I counted these twice so to make the count correct I have to subtract once the intersection so number of events which are inside the intersection should be subtracted because it went into this number and went into this number so it went twice now and obviously if there is no intersection if events are mutually exclusive then this uh, member is not participating but this is the formula for 
the probability of or condition or union between two events in case they are not mutually exclusive. This is a mutually exclusive case. This is not mutually exclusive case, which adds this component into, uh, into, into the equation. So it's more general, but it's not as beautiful, <laughs> if you wish, as this one. All right, now, I will definitely address certain concepts which I am touching right now, especially conditional probabilities and independence, uh, in uh, further lectures, lectures in, in more details. So this is just the first view, and my purpose was to introduce certain operations on uh, uh, events, if, uh, the arithmetic, if you wish, I call it arithmetic, the operation which looks like a plus, but it's not really addition, it's actually a unionization of two um, uh, mutually exclusive, or not mutually exclusive, in this case, events. And the, the theorem of multiplication, again, this is not a multiplication, this is just an intersection or end operation, um, uh, which kind of produce this nice, nicely looking formula. Well, that's it for today. Thanks very much. I recommend you to go through notes for this lecture, presented on unizor.com. Um, uh, as you read the notes, uh, you might just, you know, extra time reflect on, on all these concepts. And again, further lectures will be in more details devoted to concepts of independence and conditional probabilities. Thanks very much and good luck.